and I mean, we're probably the second best region in the world right now, just behind like behind NA, but NA are undisputably the best. But we just seem to remain un, unappreciated, and, and I'm pretty sure we're not getting an extra spot for next land still. Hey, what it do, what it do, YouTube? It's your boy Q, and today I want to talk about the path to becoming, well, a pro Apex player. Because you see over here on the channel lately, we've had the chance to talk to some ALGS players, coaches, and even talk to an org CEO getting ready to head into land. But today I wanted to talk to somebody who, during the course of ALGS Split 1, proved that that path from PLQ to playoffs was possible. Not just playoffs even, but we saw Onyx Esports technically qualify for match point in the grand finals over the course of the same game that TSM would eventually walk away as the champion. So actually, before I move on, let me hit you with that one more again, in case you were sleeping. The path from PLQ to match point in the uh, playoffs of ALGS, you know, out of arguably like the most underrated region to boot. So uh, Fussy, I really appreciate you taking some time to sit down, chat with your boy today. So I really appreciate you coming in and hanging out with your boy. How you doing today, fam? Yeah, I'm all right. A um, little bit tired after the comp. I had to deal with some contests, but it's all right. So before we get started here, Fussy, uh, for anyone who might be listening, tune in, who doesn't know about, about yourself, tell us a little bit about you. I mean, what kind of got you into competitive Apex and how the heck do you balance uh, that alongside of your studies for chiropractic studies or for chiropractic science? Uh, well, I, I've been playing games my whole life and... During school, I used to swim at like a very high competitive level. Mm -hmm. So I carried that over after quitting swimming at the end of high school and kind of noticed I was like pretty decent at the game. So I wanted to pursue that as much as I could. And as for juggling that with my uni studies, uh, it is tough. It definitely gets <laughs> tougher sometimes. But I can imagine. Me, yeah. All my, my entire team does the same thing. We all, we all study at uni and we all play competitively. So you kind of just make it work. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. So I, I know now as obviously as far as like the, the boogie borders team, that's now known as Onyx Esports. It's a relatively new team, uh, but you yourself, you've been around the scene for a minute. I mean, competing for a few years now under some different banners, like no fly zone SNG, and even finishing second in APAC South for the split two last year under the banner, uh, banner suit of Raikou. So I'm kind of curious. I want to focus on that here for a moment. If you don't mind, I I'm sure you probably learned quite a few things under your first go around with SNG, but you know, I would imagine playing alongside players like Waltzy and Bullet L, you probably learned quite a bit. And I, even looking back, I, I'm sure you kind of were really more the silent assassin because eyes were on Waltzy, you know, coming into this split, obviously being a part of the team that was picked up by Moist. But, you know, on that roster, obviously alongside two great minds, tell me kind of what you felt like it was with your time there. You were only there for a split, but then you kind of made this ascension with Onik now. So what was it about that time that really helped you, I guess, unleash the beast? Uh, uh, Sudoraku taught me a lot. Uh, coming from SNG, I won't really count the no fly zone as a part of my career, <laughs> right, but right, um, right. coming from SNG, my first proper competition, uh, I learned like a fair bit. I learned how to handle situations, but then playing with Sudoraku, like a top tier team in the region, mm -hmm. uh, definitely taught me a lot. I had two, two players on my team with a hell of a lot more experience than I, and that taught me how to handle bunch of different situations during the game at all different levels of the game land etc and it also helped me build confidence to where i am now to know what i can do which helps me and my team gotcha gotcha okay so i i remember when y'all kind of bursted onto the scene i know y'all had done a couple of events as far as with uh syndicate now known as apac south hub but when y'all did the event with the newer esports uh like the world elite community series because that was actually like my introduction into the apac south region when it comes to casting and uh, I know as far as the early days for you guys, y'all had like quite a bit of success. I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit and see, was early on in the Boogie Borders days, did you guys kind of see yourself being able to ascend to this level? Because I know when I talked to Genome heading into Split 1, y'all were one of the teams that was definitely like on the radar. Was like playoffs always like an idea or is that something that kind of really only became more of the front running idea as that, you know, playoffs idea got closer? Uh, playoffs was definitely probably the only thing on the mind. Uh, yeah. I was not really willing to accept anything else, and my teammates were definitely in the same boat. Uh, so, yeah, 
I, I knew I knew I could make it. I knew we could make it as a team. So I was very confident we could make playoffs, and that was the only thing I was thinking about. All right, all right, I love it. I love it. So, what did you feel like as far as in this beginning of the season? Even did you see? I mean, because I mean, when you look back, obviously with Onik now, you've gotten the furthest into the grand final. I mean, Suda Raikou, I think, fell what was like twenty third, twenty fourth in Raleigh, like just outside of that grand final mark. Um, when you when you kind of look. As far as with that, was that something you saw as a possibility even at the beginning of the season, or was it just like we'll make playoffs and everything else is cake? Uh, I mean, I was keen to make playoffs and just kind of go from there. Yeah. But when we made finals, I I knew what we could do. I mean, when we got there, I knew we could make finals and then again go from there. But when we made finals, I I knew what we could do. I knew that we could win. Right. And we did fall short of that, but I knew we could do very well. Okay, okay. So now I'm kind of curious when we look back at APAC as far as over the split of this, like this last split, right? Because you had mentioned the idea being from the word go uh, for that, that playoff run, right? And even though maybe you guys weren't at the top of the leaderboard, like say Iron Blood Gaming, y'all were the only team other than Iron Blood Gaming that won multiple sessions throughout the course of the split. It, you know, y'all were never on the outside looking in. So Kind of talk me through a little bit as far as this split, because, you know, you'd mentioned previously on Sudo Raikou, you were kind of following the lead of some players that had more experience than you. This season, obviously, this split, you're, you're helping lead that charge. Kind of tell me what some of the challenges you kind of noticed this split that you hadn't really gone through before. Uh, the main challenge that I guess I found, it wasn't a major challenge, was getting uh, my teammates confident against mm -hmm. playing the best in the world, which I didn't find in the region. That, that wasn't a problem. but during like the initial stages of LAN and international scrims, I definitely had to like get them in the mindset that we are just as good, if not better than everyone else, which they fell into very well. And it turned out great performing. Perform they performed really well. Is that probably part of the reason we saw you guys really kind of picking up that steam even on that Saturday, right? Because you definitely, when y'all, I think, what, we're at the top of the first part of the lower bracket and then still finished, I mean, obviously qualified for grand finals there. Y'all y'all really seemed to hit y'all's stride when it uh, mattered the most. It was really impressive to watch. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. We de definitely didn't have a great group stage. We did have a few things happen to us in the group stages that were out of our control. Mm. But, um, I mean end of the day group stages don't mean a thing right you can still you can still make finals from losers and you can still do well so then talk to me a little bit about finals then fussy because you know when you walk in on championship sunday kind of like i was talking about earlier right so, so pseudo raiku didn't make it there while you were on the roster and this time obviously it wasn't easy y'all had to go through both brackets on uh saturday y'all were able to get in there when you walked into copper bat box on sunday did you almost feel like that pressure was gone like hey we've exceeded we're not so much we exceeded expectation but we're here now. Let's just go ahead and go out and play our game. Or was it kind of like a little bit of that pregame nerves of like, hey, we could walk out of here ho hoisting this trophy? Uh, going into finals, I was I was very confident. Yeah, I, I wasn't worried. I know we can beat anyone in a gunfight. I know we can win a game. I know we can win games. And like I knew what we could achieve and what we needed to do to do that. And I know my teammates had the same mindset. And I was so all in all, I was locked in, and so was my team. I mean, at the end of the day, y'all were one of seven teams that had met that 50-point threshold, right? I mean, obviously, y'all were, were playing at a very high level throughout the course of that. I want, I'm kind of curious, though, over the course today, uh, and I think y'all had one of these as well during the course of the, the tournament, but I, I want to know what that feeling of the main stage dub is like. I mean, y'all walked away with one of like the grand final dubs as far as those last rounds, right? So I would imagine that has to be quite the adrenaline rush. She like, hearing the crowd go nuts after you clutch up a dub. Tell me about that. Uh, it, it is amazing. Winning, winning in finals, winning on the main stage is, is great, and it builds confidence into the next game and the next few games. But at the end of the day, we aren't there to win one game. We're there to right. win the whole thing. So I don't exactly, I don't show the most emotion, which is something I need to work on. But yeah, I'm, I'm, we're there to win the whole thing, not one game. I mean, I think it's okay to still be able to make sure you're locked in after the game, right? I don't think you need to um go all uh Mande and go like jumping up on the desk or nothing you know <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> um but i was just i would imagine that it's one thing when you when you clutch up a, a dub when you're you just you're happy during a, a tournament obviously but to hear the cheers i'm sure that just brings that to a whole nother level right yeah it, it is pretty nice i mean they weren't exactly cheering for us they were cheering for tsm <laughs> getting the match point but i mean you know we'll, we'll take what we can get hey you know what we'll take what we hey i can feel it i can feel it i love it i love it so 
Now let, let's face it, right? Split one's over, back to lab again for split number two. I, I'm kind of curious as far as, you know, now since it, you know, obviously Onyx is, is a known name, I, I think not just in the region, but I think people are going to be looking for you guys, expecting you guys to repeat and get back to London when it comes to split two. Um, what is it that you feel like as far as for you and the boys there at Onyx need to do and like focus on the most to make sure you get the trip back to Copper Box? Uh, yeah, so first of all, we, we need to get our drop spots. We have to deal with a few teams trying to contest us for our drop spots. Mm -hmm. But besides that, just consistency and confidence and finding a comp that works with this with this meta change. But um, we've been working on that. We've got a few things in mind. But yeah, consistency and confidence will definitely take, will definitely is what we're required to get into playoff split two. So let's, uh, let, let's, let's talk about, I'm going to sneak in an extra question here, Fussy. I, I apologize. Actually, uh, I, I don't, because I'm not expecting so much juice from you here. All right, I'm not expecting you to give me any way, any like, uh, like any sort of strategies here. But I, I realized, um, you know, because over here on the channel, we, we talk a lot of Apex, even some Valorant as well. But I, I've been talking with some people across some different regions, talking like um, challengers here, kind of getting ready for this next split. And I've been asking, you know, different casters and things what they're going to be expecting to see as far as the meta shift with some of the changes coming from six, season 16. I'm kind of curious as far as for you, um, some of the things that you're going to be expect or what you're excited for to see changing at that comp level. Again, I'm not looking for you to give me any juice as far as what composition y'all are running in, but is it like you're happy that the scan meta may be starting to shift a little bit away? Are you happy that there's going to be more diversity in the legend pool? Although maybe not so much in APAC, y'all have already kind of always had a diversity in the legend pool, but talk to me about some of the changes coming with season 16 and what you're I guess excited for about at the the highest level. Uh, I'm definitely happy that scan characters have been nerfed. They haven't been nerfed enough. People people are already starting to realize and will definitely fully realize that Seer is definitely still in the meta, mm. especially for edge teams. Not as strong, but definitely still top tier. Definitely still S tier. So I guess I'm kind of keen to see less Seers and no bloody cryptos because that character <laughs> pisses me off. All right, but um, besides that. Uh, I am keen to see some different comps. You feel, like, you feel like we're gonna rough. see? You feel like we're gonna see quite a bit of that? Yeah, there there will be a few weird comps out there, especially in our region. I mean, I, I feel like in the the APAC region, both south and north, I think are usually the the best examples of allowing uh, people to really flex the characters. I'm excited to definitely see that though, um, as well. So so I'm I'm pumped for it. Um, I am curious though. One more thing, and I, I think I only have like one more question or get you wrapped up out of here, man. I know you, you've, uh, you've, you've had a long day. You've gone through six games. So uh, again, I appreciate you sitting down and, and chatting with me today. But, you know, again, we talk about on this channel, uh, multiple games, multiple regions. I was kind of wanting to pick your, uh, pick your brain a little bit as far as coming from the APAC South region. I think it's one thing that um, a lot of people talk about. I think even we saw the main broadcast talking about a little bit. Um, seems to be a little bit of an underrated region. Uh, seems to be a little bit of an undervalued region. I would imagine coming from that APAC South region, it almost would put a little chip on one shoulder, right? Y'all don't maybe necessarily get the monetary support in like the third party scene, like we see in EMEA, NA, like as far as like the typical prize pools. Uh, I know, especially when I was talking with Dia on Thursday, when we were kind of just talking about the Apex realm in a whole, uh, he mentioned about the passion that just emits out of the APAC South region, even despite that. So I was kind of curious if you could tell me a little bit about, about that process of competing in a region that maybe doesn't have the best of opportunities again while juggling uh going to school nonetheless i would imagine that puts quite a bit of pressure on y'all but y'all still showed out and did y'all sing this flash split yeah i mean straight up being from apex south is rough on a social social standpoint especially for australians and like english speaking side it's very difficult to grow anything mm -hmm. and then on the actual competitive side, we've proved at every land we've had like a very high percentage of our teams make finals. Yeah, and and then better yet, at London we've had a sixth, a seventh, and then two finals teams. Four out, four out of our five teams do really well, and we the still one team are that didn't had health issues too. So like, I mean, probably could have been five, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, we're probably the second best region in the world right now, just behind like behind NA, but NA are undisputably the best. But we just seem to remain un, unappreciated and, and i'm pretty sure we're not getting an extra spot for next land still 
Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, right? I almost feel like when I was looking at some of the, you know, some of the people who were posting like quick maths of what the the spots were, it almost feels like the possibilities for any region to either gain a spot or lose a spot is kind of tough. I mean, even when you look at let's say another region that has the same amount of spots as APAC South had one team in the grand finals. Um that was, I think outside the top 10 even whereas y'all had four in the top in the grand finals, two in the top 10. Yeah, y'all are both going back in the same split with the same amount of spots. It's kind of weird to me, you know? Yeah, it's a bad system. Uh, I have a lot of things to say about that, but they're not the best. <laughs> well, I I'm sure we can, uh, I will probably agree with a lot of those, but let's just say, we'll, we'll save those for a different day for a different yeah. <laughs> conversation. Um, now, now, Fuzzy, before we get you on up out of here, fam, I I'm kind of curious as far as for people wanting to keep up with you. Uh, where, and your kind of your adventures in the ALGS, where they, where can they find you at social medias? You got, you know, where, where you're posting content at, uh, at, let the people know. Uh, I, I need to work on my social side of things and I'm definitely going to start to, uh, but, uh, on Twitter and Twitch, you can find me at fussy FF and on YouTube fussy AF and that's about it. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, as far as I, I want to say one more thing before I get out of here, man, I, I just love seeing the passion out of the region. I know you guys over at Onik always uh, show it as well. So I, I want to say good luck with split number two. And again, thank you so much for taking time. I'm sh I don't even want to know how late into the evening it is right now for you. I can only imagine with the, <laughs> the time conversion. So I, I appreciate you for taking some time in uh, chatting some, not just Apex, but Onik as well, Fussy. No worries. Thank you for having me. All right, now, Chad, if you've made it this far uh, at this point, I need y'all to do me a huge favor, all right? This is a new YouTube channel, so every like and comment really helps me out. That algorithm helps me get my content in front of more people. So if you know anybody else that you'd like me to speak to as far as heading into Split 2, also leave those down in the comments below, all right? You'd be surprised how many people are willing to sit down and chat. You've missed 100% of the shots you don't take, so I'm always going to shoot mine. So let me know down below who y'all want to talk to, and I'll try and make it happen, all right? Uh, and also, don't forget, if you're looking for a cool place to keep up with weekly news, updates, watch parties, interviews like this, smack that subscribe button, turn those notifications on so we can catch y'all right back here, all right? Until we do catch y'all back here on the channel, man, don't forget, with everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere, game hard and love harder, all right, y'all? That's Fussy, I'm Q, signing out. If you ain't show you just don't wanna be, you wanna be me, but you will never be. Fresh to see you.